Today, we are continuing with the series, The Nature of the Holy Spirit, or Who is the Holy Spirit? After this series, we are going to start on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So before we talk about the, <clears throat> the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we want to understand who is the Holy Spirit. So what is the nature of the Holy Spirit? Because many people, we have seen that we have mischaracterized the nature of the Holy Spirit. I think it's very important to know what the Holy Spirit is before we start knowing who he, who he is. So we saw that uh, we described last week the nature of the Holy Spirit. So like we said, what was the purpose of the study? To show that the E is part of the deity, part of the Godhead. That's like God the Father, God the Son. So our understanding of the Holy Spirit is not, um, it's, it's, um, it's limited, it's, it's God. We cannot understand him in our human capacity. So he is God. We have got a certain measure of understanding. Like we read in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 and 9, that we have got a certain measure of appreciation just as heaven and the earth, the distance between heaven and earth is our understanding between God and human beings. We can never understand God. Once we understand God, then he becomes human, he becomes a person. So there are many things that we can know about God. We also talked about the names of the Holy Spirit. Like God is called the Most High, Jehovah. We gave examples where the church is called the kingdom, the body, the house, the bride, the bride of Christ. Like where you say in Ephesians chapter 5, where the body of Christ is being described as my bride. That must be spotless without wrinkles, without stains. That is the bride we is. That is the church that is being talked about. And also the gospel itself, this Bible we are talking about. Bible is the New Testament. It is described as the New Testament. It's very important to understand it. Christians, we are called children of God, called saints. Um, first Peter, is it First Peter chapter two, verse nine, where it said we are the royal priesthood. It's we are called the priest of God, the priesthood of God. So when we see we are being given names, saints, like um, Sister Sonia calls Saint Sonia. Disciples, children of God, elders in the church, overseers, pastors, the Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 16. These are names of the, uh, the church leadership. These are the elders. When you say elders, they are not necessarily men. These are people, leaders of the church, presbyterians. These are the, just the leadership of the church, bishops, overseers, pastors. Um, people who are generally charged with running the church. In each of these, um, in each of these cases, you can see that is the same thing, the same object, daddy, father. All these things, it still remains the same thing. Like we said, the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. The issue of the Holy Ghost, like I said, it was derived that um, they thought during that time when the Bible was going up, uh, translated from the Hebrew to English, there were ghosts that were giving problems then. So they said, ah, then this kind of ghost, because the head was a person who died, and then rose again. They said, this ghost is a good ghost because he's doing good. So they said, this must be a holy ghost. That's where the holy ghost came, came about. So they just said, yeah, there's nothing. It was, it was nothing different. So the King James Version is the most the closest English Bible version that was ever produced 
that the spirit of God. Any other, maybe the Thompson version, but any other Bible version, I would not recommend you. You can read in conjunction with the King James Bible. If you don't, if you are not come, if you are not good with the English, try to read parallel with the King James so that you can understand better. Any other, the Spirit of God, I'll just tell you this so that you know. I don't carry favors. I'm not trying to talk down the other Bible verses. I just tell you this thing. Go and pray. First 50 days, first two years, first three years. This is just the truth. Unless Christ comes and tells you a different gospel, a, a, a different truth. But this truth that I will tell you, you will not change it. He will tell you, yes, read in conjunction with other type of verses. Unless God, change, unless God himself changes it, that's something else, because I cannot argue. He is the Bible. He is the word personified. But for me, I'll just tell you, go to the King James Bible. There you will not get lost. A lot of these old Bible visions that you're seeing, because he did not study theology, we we'll see a lot of things have been changed. So for you, it can be easily deceived because there are many things that you will not see. There are many things that you will not notice. So you will never see them. But if you are a student of theology, you will see many things that, you, that are not apparent to you because you say, oh, okay, these things. But if I begin to show you where the things are, I said, okay, now I see, okay. In one chapter, I can see several things. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, I didn't know. So we're not trying to talk down the other patients. The only thing is I talk about the one that I know. Just like I do not preach about the devil because I don't know about him. I talk about the one that I know my God. I do not talk about thieves. I talk about the police because those are the ones that protect me. If you talk about thieves, probably those are the ones that you know they do a better job for. So you speak about those that gives you protection. For me, I speak about my God, about the ones that I know service <clears throat> provides better protection for me. So like I said, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, the comforter, these are the names. The spirit, I want to continue from where we left, the spirit of God. Also, he's a living spirit being. So we're going to see that he has good feelings. We even saw where um, Ananias and Sapphira so we even saw that the living spirit, that um, he was light, you can lie to him. He hears that Ananias and Sapphira, um, <clears throat> where he was lied to, he make decisions right or wrong. He intercedes where he moans and groaning. He has a mind of his own. We saw that he gives um, the, uh, the gifts, the ones that we are going to talk about uh, in the next um, couple of weeks that will be, we are going to be talking about it. And that he is being referred as masculine. Is referred as a neuter, as a he. Like I said, I'm not going to get into that debate. That's why he's being referred as a he. The Lord Jesus Christ, he, spirit of truth. I do not want to get into foolish arguments. What support said, foolish argument, don't get into foolish arguments. The, the Bible, I think First Peter chapter 3, verse 15, it allows me to answer all questions if you ask them. But there are also Bible scriptures that allows me not, not to answer foolish questions. So the same Bible does, does, um, compels me to answer questions, also protects me from answering foolish questions because they life. So as a servant of God, as a minister of God, we must use wisdom. There were people who was asking <clears throat> a, a long time ago. He said, uh, so where did, um, uh, who did set Mary? I said, it's a very foolish question. I said, you're asking about set. He said, yes. I said, who was this bro the, the brother to save? He said, Cain. I said, who did he marry? <laughs> he said, said, I said, Cain, who did Cain marry? Uh, who, who was the wife, of, uh, the wife of Cain? He said, I don't know. I said, did you, was he not the father of Enoch? He said, yes. He said, who was the wife of Cain? Why don't you start asking, Cain, was Cain not older than um, Seth? He said, yes. He said, why don't you ask that question, that who was the wife of Cain? 
So people at the end of the day, these are very foolish questions at the end of the day. So when I told the person, yes, Adam and Eve had five children, five children. I'm just giving you so that you know some of the things. Five children, three boys, two girls. One of the bear, Abel was killed by the brother Cain. And they had a replacement set and they married their own sister. So people say, ah, this, this, yes. He was cursed of God, but he went on to build a city. So when people, when you see a, a person driving a car, Cain was cursed, but he went on to build a city. So don't say because, ah, oh, I've got a job, I'm not cursed. Yes, you can be cursed, you can be building, you, you may have a city, you may have 10 big houses in your city. That does not translate into anything. Those are not blessings. You still can be living under cases and looking prosperous in the eyes of people. So I, I just wanted to tell you, <clears throat> don't get into foolish arguments with people. We were talking about the neuter of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth is referred to as a he. I just wanted you to know, because when you're talking to people who really want to get in this foolish argument, so he is classified with the father, the son, who are surely living individuals. <clears throat> the Bible says in the Great Commission, go ye into the world, Matthew chapter 28, uh, is it 28, yeah, 19, 19, 20, 19 to 21, or Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to 16 or 17, where he said, go ye into the world, making disciples of men, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which means three of them are living. If they were not living, they would not have made that. Or the one that <coughs> the one that you live when you are sharing the grace, right? The second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. The same may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. That the one that when you are sharing the grace. The three of them are being mentioned together. If one of them was not a living being, they would not have been mentioned. So since God and the, um, God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ are living beings, they are being mentioned as beings. So it makes sense that the living, the Holy Spirit is a living being. So this is where I left it last week. So we're going to take it over from here. If you have got questions, we're happy to refer to the Bible. Like I said, it's a perversion that we come with a doctrine or we come with positions that do not align with the Bible. Here we use, it is written. We go what, with what is written in the Bible. Not what I think, no. There must be four or five Bible scriptures that support a position. Not one Bible verse. I cannot come in with a one Bible verse and say, no, this is what I think. Then shut somebody out. Then condemn someone. No. When the Lord Jesus Christ was baptized, the Father spoke from heaven and the Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove. So this pictures the Holy Spirit as having a life of himself, like the Father and the Son. So he took a separate bodily form. So this verse is so that the Holy Spirit acts jointly with the other persons. God the Father spoke from heaven while the Lord Jesus Christ was being baptized. <clears throat> and he came down. When we saw when the Lord Jesus Christ was, he was led by the Holy Spirit to be tested of the devil. So we can see he was active even during the dawn of creation. Holy Spirit was very active. He said the Holy Spirit was active. He was hovering above the waters during the dawn of creation. When you read very closely in the book of John, or when you read in the book of Colossians, you begin to see that both of them were active during creation. That's why God the Father said, let us make man in our image. <clears throat> but we now know that it was the Lord Jesus Christ who created it. But all of them were, were there during creation. So when all this evidence is considered as a whole, it proves that the Holy Spirit is a living being. 
individual, not an attitude, not a power, not an influence. So he is a person. He is not an attribute. This is not an attitude. It's not a characteristic. So this is more than a power. Let us quickly read Romans chapter 15. I want to show us something quickly before we go to other elements that I want us to see. Romans chapter 15, I just want to quickly read something, then we go on to the juicy, juicy parts. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Now, the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. 19, I want you to see. Through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about into Ericum, <clears throat> I fully preached the gospel of Christ. So we can see already that he is more than just a characteristic of power. He is more, so the Holy Spirit is a living being who possesses characteristics of a person. He is referred. <coughs> Please forgive me, I'm still uh, not fully recovered. He is referred to by terms that implies he's a personal being. He acts and does work like a living being, like you and me. So we conclude that the Holy Spirit is a living being. He is not a characteristic, or he is not part of another person. He is a, his own person. Just like the word the uh, Lord Jesus Christ he is called the word. So we can see that uh, when you say the Lord Jesus Christ is the word personified, it doesn't make, when you say God does not deny himself, because he is the word. In the beginning was the word. That's why God said, I'll honor my word more than my, I'll honor my word more than my name. Because in the end, he cannot deny himself. What does it say? So when people claim the Holy Spirit is just power from God, it says the evidence above. So if the Holy Spirit is listed separately from his power, then we have got a problem. It is a problem. Let's look at Luke, uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Then there is a contradiction in the Bible. We will have some... <clears throat> We will have some challenges to in some, some scriptures. Acts chapter 10, verse 38 says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So we can see that um, the Holy Spirit is listed separately from his power. So he is listed separately, is listed as an individual. It's a separate office, totally, totally. There are Bible verses. Let me send some Bible verses that you can check also in your spare time. Please write the Bible verses if you do not understand. That is the essence of teaching so that you will be able to follow. Teaching is very important because it helps you to understand. Okay, Sister Sonia, I'm seeing your message now. If there's anything the scriptures we are recording, so they will be able to get that. What, what distinguishes the Holy Spirit from other things? The Holy Spirit is a living being, a living spirit being. So what, what is the difference between the Holy Spirit and other spirit beings? So we, this is what we want to see. What is the difference between the Holy Spirit, me, the demons, and the angels? We want to see now, what is the difference? Because when people are coming and speaking in tongues now, we have got people who are saying he is speaking in them, he is speaking through the demons. We have got the gifts that are coming from God. 
somebody seeing something in spirit said, maybe it's the, de it's the devil. Everything we're attributing to the, to the devil because we don't believe in the power of God. So the Holy Spirit is distinct from devil and demons. Obviously, he is a distinct, he is distinct from the devil and demons since by nature he is the Holy Spirit. Therefore, is not holy. Therefore, is not holy. We as human beings, we are not holy. Yes, the Bible says, be here holy. So there are times we are, most of the times we are not holy. But therefore, are generally not holy and therefore is not holy at all. So the Holy Spirit is the same from human beings and from angels. Can somebody, I think I saw Sister Yinka, are you able to read for me? First Peter chapter one, verse 10 to 12, please. Yes, sir. First Peter chapter 10. First Peter chapter 1, verse 10 to 12. First Peter chapter 1. 1, verse 10 to 12. Yes, please. Thank you. Therefore, brethren, be more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. 11. For so an end. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Verse 12, for this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things, though you know and are established in the present truth. Amen. Amen. So angels on Old Testament presence alike desired to look into the things that have been prophesied in the Old Testament and then were revealed in the New Testament. But the Holy Spirit sent from the heaven revealed all things. It is the Holy Spirit that revealed all these things. So the Holy Spirit is here distinguished from angels and from human beings. The plan of salvation was designed by God the Father. It's so it is designed by God the Father, willed by the Lord Jesus Christ, and revealed by the Holy Spirit. So all of them, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 to 13, men cannot know the things of God until they are revealed to us by the Holy Spirit and reveals the things of God. You and I, can never know the things of God until and unless they are revealed by the Spirit of God. You and I cannot know. It is not easy for you to know the things of God. People, all the people that you see posting say, me, I know what was happening. There are people that I want to tell you what God was doing when, 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 um, when, when the world was being created. Others, I, others say, I know God was drinking coffee. I know God was doing this. Does it really matter? Let's say God was drinking coffee. Does it really matter? God said, be ye holy. He gave us a commandment, right? Be ye holy for I'm holy. Okay, I come and tell you, God said, son, go and tell them I was drinking coffee. Does it benefit your holiness now? Does it strengthen your faith as a Christian? I come and impress you with this nonsense. Does this strengthen your Christianity? This is gesturing, brethren. This is absolute rubbish before the Lord. This is entertainment. God is not looking for people who are coming to entertain him. God, when he gave the Bible, he did not say, go and tell them where I was. Is that what you, is that what he told Moses when he, um, when he met when he met Moses in Exodus chapter three, so go and tell them in Exodus chapter three verse fourteen. Go and tell them I am that I am. Say no. Did he did he tell them go and tell them I was drinking coffee when I met the world? Say no. I am the God of your forefathers. I am that I am. That's what I told them. The one that made you to cross that the Red Sea. The one that this this is what he told them. Now we are busy now telling the people, so you know better than the one that created the world. 
at times we need to be careful. This becomes another gospel. The one that Apostle Paul mentioned in First Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 to 9 or 10. This is where we are missing it now. This is where we are entertaining people in the church. We spend three, four hours and say, ah, people are clapping hands like this. They are clapping hands to rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Does it have any spiritual value? No, zero. You probably bent your fuel for nothing. I'm sorry to say, but for me, it does not have any spiritual value. I know people, I know people will offend it, but I'm not here to go to Chester or to make friends with anybody over this matter. Just telling people the truth. What God was doing, what God is doing, does it really matter? God said, be here holy. Go and tell them what they're supposed to be doing. That's it. Go and tell them to be right before me. He told Father Abraham, Genesis chapter 17, verse 1 b, walk before me and be perfect. Exodus chapter 19, verse 6. I want you to be holy people. First Peter chapter 1, verse 16. Be ye holy, for I am holy. He made this condition very clear. God said he's not willing to compromise. So he, he has made his position very clear. And these are the things. Remember, he told Malachi. In Malachi, he said, go and prepare the way for me. Is it not the same message that he's talking today? And we are busy here making noise. We are busy here, especially with this microphone that came yesterday. Busy making noise with this public address system. With all the effects that are coming in, people is like in discotheque. Hmm? Who needs to go to disco now? People are no longer going to discotheque. If you want the discotheque, you go and get it in church. Just to take out those slides, you know, things are like just like this. Just a change of environment. Man is generally not dead. This is where perversion is coming in. So men cannot know the things of God until they're revealed to us. So it's the Holy Spirit that knows the things of God. And I just digressed so that we know that when men start boasting and men are not told the sins, there's a teaching which I did three years ago. When you're talking, how does God interpret sin? It's not what I say sins. I did a ministration, short ministration before the ministers in, in the city when I was talking about certain things with the ministers of God in um, a gathering of forum when I was telling them about something. It's a pity that we are servants of God. We don't tell people certain things. A pastor that tell, don't tell people the judgment of God, the day of the Lord. We don't tell people about the cross. The cross is the essence of our going to church. You will never get an applause with the kind of preaching that I do. I've never been applauded for, for, for preaching. I don't seek any, I have, ne I have never gotten a compliment from the Lord either. I don't look for any compliment. If I'm to get a compliment, maybe if I cross over to the other side, you say, son, you're a bit harsh. If I get that compliment, I'll say, father, thank you. Or you, you should have been a little bit more harsh. Then I say, Father, I thought I was a little bit harsher. Said you could have been a little bit more. I'll take that. But not that you're lenient. Because you risk meeting God with the blood on your hands. I told the pastors. You know, go singing like this. Say, ah, God, I'm going to meet God with the blood. Say, you're a murderer. Get away from me. Say, but I did not kill anybody. Say, look, the blood. You and the murderer are killing people and I'm proper. Say, yeah, blood is oozing from your hands. I gave you people. You did not tell them about me. Now they're going to face, they are going to, they are going to face me with my gospel, with no knowledge of me. They've been going to church for 15 years under your leadership, under your roof. Okay. How are they going to face me? It's like you're going for an examination that you know nothing about. Yet you're the lecturer, a professor that doesn't seem to know anything. 
doesn't seem to know his left from his right. It's like you're teaching a subject that you don't even know yourself. Then the question is, how did you even qualify to send before the people and be supposed lecture of the subject that you are supposed to be teaching? On that day, Matthew 7, 21, verse 28 to 23. Say, on that day, men will come and say, Lord, did I not say this? Lord, did I not do It will not be a day of joy. People that you are praying that will not make it, you will see them there. So the Holy Spirit is neither an angel nor a human being. It follows, therefore, from these facts, not only is he, uh, is he the Holy Spirit nor an angel, but in fact, he is above the angel. He is even above men. Is it true? Yes. Acts chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. And Jovita, are you in the house? Acts chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. I'll be sending the verses soon. Acts chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. Acts chapter 5, verse 3. In Jesus' name. Amen. Acts chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. The Peter said, Ananias, why had Satan feed thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Why is it remained? Was it not thy own? And after it was sold, was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived these things in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Amen. Amen. That is the one that they say he can be lied to. He is a person. So he is above. Even though you can lie to him, he knows about it. These are the people that they were challenged. People were touched then when they became a Christian. They said, me, we want to do something for the Lord. So everybody, people will begin to, to sell the plot of land, say, we want the gospel to go, to go everywhere. So they began to sell plots of land, feeding, feeding uh, poor people, um, paying for the evangelists. We want, we, want you to, to, we want to give you money for sheep, money for us to go to the Macedonia, to book for your lodging, for food, for everything. And they came, sold their money, they sold their plot of land. They came in, they agreed with the wife in their room, and they came. They said, yeah, this is the money. They said, it's your house. You could have said, we sold it 10,000, but we want to give 5,000, just like that. They said, why did you lie? They said, oh. And so when the wife came, when he came, they said, the, 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 the wife, they said, the people that going to bury your husband, they are coming, they are coming now, you are going to die. Because you lied, not against me, but against the Holy Spirit. So if, I, I want to show you now, what is the difference between, the, between God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ? That he is different from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So if the Holy Spirit is not a human being or an angel, could it, could it be that, that the Holy Spirit is just another name, or he is perhaps, he is the Father or the Holy, or he is the Father or the Son? He is a separate person from the Father and the Son. The Holy Spirit, let us go to that Helen, Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 and 20. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 and 20. Sorry. 18 and 20? Yes, please. Matthew chapter 1, 8. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise. When <laughs> has his mother, Mary, was exposed to Joseph before mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. before they come together. Mm -hmm. She was found with a child of the Holy Spirit, 20. Then Joseph, her husband being a just man and not willing to make her a public example was minded to put her away privily. Amen. Okay, I, I, I said 19 and uh, 18 and 20, but it's okay. I, I, I will, I will Can I read 20? And 20, yeah. Okay, 20 I read. But while he taught on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and in, um, up to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, Joseph, Thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy, of the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's of the Holy Spirit. So we can see the anything that you read, I just want to explain so that you understand here. Now, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise when he when as his mother Mary was espoused, his spice was given to betrothed. It's like was given, like engaged, was like engaged. He say before they came, before he could sleep with her. That's what it means. That's like a technical jargon. Before he was, before they came together. So there was no way that she could come pregnant. That what that's what it meant here. Before the, she was found with a child, so she was already pregnant. They say how she, how could she become pregnant? So we can get a fair uh, understanding when you look, when you read in the book of Luke, chapter one, for especially in the 35, we say, how can it be? I know not a man. When the angel Gabriel came and said, ah, blessed be thou amongst women. They say, what type of greeting is this one? When you are saying, ah, we are blessed amongst the women. They say, I know not a man. I have not slept with a man. How can I be pregnant? They say, no, the Holy Spirit shall overshadow thee. That, that is another term. He said, you will sleep with you, you will just cover you, and then you will come back. So here we can see that the Holy Spirit conceived the Lord Jesus Christ in the womb. We can see the Holy Spirit again, that is the one that resurrected Nazareth. We can see that he played a role in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, but we are not getting into that. So we see here, so did Jesus Christ conceive himself in Mary's womb? Surely not. The Holy Spirit must be separate and distinct person from the Lord Jesus Christ. That we can see in Luke chapter 135, because he said the Holy Spirit shall overshadow you. We've used, I've used this um, when we're doing some prayer points. If you want it, you can always read. So all three, they were present at baptism, Luke chapter 3, verse 21 and 22. So the Lord Jesus Christ was in baptism or in Matthew chapter 3, verse 17, uh, from 18 to 17 also, we can find it. Parallels. I usually use the Matthew, 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 John, Luke, and Luke, the, the four of them, the four Gnostics. When I'm studying the Bible, I use the four of them. So some of them, they explain because none of, um, none of them could capture. Luke was a doctor. This one was a text collector. So the, the way of capturing things, so that's why I capture it differently. When you look at Luke, when you read Luke, Luke was the one that said, pick up your cross daily. It mentioned daily. Luke is the same person that said um, to Apostle Peter, when you become a Christian, when thou art converted, strengthen your breath. And say, Peter, when you become a Christian, the, one, the same person that was with the Lord Jesus Christ the whole time, the other ones did not capture that part. So when you read, Comparing the, the four of the other three, when you read four of them, you get a better understanding of this. So here you can see that the Father spoke from heaven and acknowledged the Lord Jesus Christ as his son. And the Holy Spirit appeared in the form of a dove. So all three were present as distinguished one from the other. The Father spoke from heaven and the Holy Spirit was coming down as a dove. So just as the Son distinguished himself here on earth, the father, there were all three of them separate. So 
blasphemy against Jesus, uh, against Jesus Christ is not blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. When the Lord Jesus Christ read, um, is it in Matthew chapter 12, verse 31 or 32? He was saying blasphemy against the Son will be forgiven, but it's not so against the Holy Spirit. You can come and say Jesus Christ is a drunkard, he's a fool, I don't care about him. But if you say that against the Lord, against the Holy Spirit, that sin, even now, it will not be forgiven, nor in the world to come, it will not be forgiven. So then people should take their time when you begin to say this, this person is speaking in tongues person is doing these things, you need to take your time. Let that switch between the mouth and the brain be working very efficiently before you start talking things that you don't know. It's good that you take your time. Stop talking about things that you don't know. Concentrate more on your life and your salvation and you don't get yourself into trouble. Praise the Lord. So, but if the Holy Spirit is just another name for the Lord Jesus Christ or a part of Jesus Christ, then blaspheming the Holy Spirit will be blaspheming Jesus Christ. Because he said, if you blaspheme me, you will be forgiven. But if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you will, be, you will not be forgiven now, even in the thereafter. So these are two different people. He made it very clear. Very clear. So these are two different people here. So we can see already that we are talking about two different people. When you read John chapter 17, where he was saying, Father, when he, say, when he was praying to the Father, say, these ones you have given me, I have got them here. I am in the world, but not of the world. So he was praying to the Father, he was not praying to himself. When we did the five or six teachings about the Lord Jesus Christ being God, we have shown that he is God. John chapter 44, verse five and six, going to uh, Revelation chapter one, seven, covering to um, Revelation chapter 22, verse 18, where he says, I'm the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, where, where are the um, first and the last, where three of them were captured automatically like that in one line, where we can compare all of them, or the Lord of Lord, the King of Kings, where everything else can be attributed to the Lord Jesus Christ. So we can compare and without doubt argue that the person that is being mentioned here is the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, the Lord Jesus Christ's deity is God. The same argument we are making here that the Holy Spirit is God, he is deity. That is why we are making the argument before we, we tell you that when you get the gifts, we are getting them from God. That's why from next week, we are going to be teaching about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But before we start teaching about the gifts, we wanted to know who is he? Because he was saying blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. So that when, so that when you get the gift, if you start selling the gifts, you are blaspheming him. Me, I see. Me, if you don't give me money, you are blaspheming him because that gift was given for free. So if you start selling, you are blaspheming so your sins will not be forgiven. Even if you repent, I don't know whether they will be forgiven. So you need to, to take your time. That's why teaching is important. A very, it's a very important ministry. So I said, nobody taught, uh, nobody taught me. Ignorance will not be forgiven. Even if you go to the court of law, you will still, still be penalized for it. So that's why you need to be taught. That's why it's important to sit down and learn. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ, when you, look, when, you, when you read Luke chapter 9, verse 1, uh, 1 and 2, he sent the 12 disciples to go out in place to go and evangelize. In Luke chapter 10, verse 1 and 2, he sent out the 70. They came rejoicing, said, ah, even the demons, they, they, were, they were obeying us when he said in Jesus' name. He said, rejoice not, they were obeying you. Celebrate that your names are written in the book of life. That's the message that he gave them. Celebrate that your names are written. The same, the same message he gave in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. On that day, men will come and say, Lord, Lord, I know do this. So at times we get distracted by measuring the minor. We celebrate short victories. The battle is long. This war, we are in a war. 
you may want a very small, you may want a street, not even a section of a, a whole city. So we are in a war. Christians, we are too, we are too quick to celebrate over nothing. We are too quick to celebrate over nothing. When there's no war, sharpen your swords. This is the message pastor should be. We are not taught enough. And when you, know, when you know so little, you want to run out. It's like you are taught how to hold a gun. You think, I, know, I know how to use a gun. Now you want to go out and say, let me go out. The people that you want to go out and shoot, they've got tanks, they've got helicopters, they've got fighter planes. Do you think you can match them? That's why it's important to sit down and be taught how to do it. It's important. That's why teaching is an important ministry. It's an important ministry. I was rebuked sharply by the Lord last time and said, teach them. I want you to teach them. I want you to teach them. Initially, I did not understand because I was so discouraged. I want you to teach them. There are some who got the revelation and said, oh, why is it important to understand? A little each day makes a lot in a year. There are things that you think you may understand, but you will see, when you begin to, to, to learn with humility, you begin to oh, I didn't know this one. Oh, no. There are pastors, I tell things, oh, I didn't know this one. I didn't know this one. There are pastors, 20 something years in ministry. I say, sir, I didn't know this one. I say, oh yes. Things get come by revelation. When I'm talking to scriptures, I don't preach with the Bible open. I can preach for three hours with Bible closed. Say, I'll just tell them, open up the Bible. Open this Bible, this open. Never open the Bible. They'll be just open your Bible. Go to this section, open your Bible. Go to Hosea chapter 6, verse 2. Open this one. Second Kings chapter this one. Just open, they will be opening the Bible. As they are coming, the Bible verse will be just throwing the Bible. As they are coming, I'll be just giving them this, just for pinpoint. So it's important when we learn. That's why the Lord spent three, three and a half years with them daily teaching them. Remember when he went into the mountain, that man, that young man with the features, he said, you of little faith, the father of that child said, he said, sir, <laughs> he said, your disciples, he said, they could not heal my son. He said, you of little faith, how long should I be with you? He rebuilt the spirit. When you ask, remember on that mountain, um, that mountain of transfiguration, where Apostle Peter said, Lord, it's not good for me, when, when he wanted to put a, a, a tent for, for um, is it Elijah on, um, Elijah and this one that, um, Elijah and Moses, he said, he said, you of little faith. Why did you, why did you call them of little faith? All the time he was with them. These are things that text. Remember all of the time he was always with them, teaching them spiritual warfare, touching their eyes. They were seeing things in the spirit. But still, it took them a great deal of time. These are things that take time. Many people that were not here for, they ended up in trouble. So we are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. The Father and the Son sent the Holy Spirit. Like he said, when the Lord Jesus Christ was about to go to the crucifixion, the crucifixion to the cross, and to return to the Father in heaven, he promised that he will send the Holy Spirit and guide the others. He said, uh, he said, I'm going to send you another comforter. I am going to send you another comforter. He was a comforter. That's why I said, I'm not going to leave you as often. I will send you another comforter. Very important. Here, you have one living individual being sending. Uh, uh, he, 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 uh, how should I put it? He is one living individual, right? Sending another individual. He cannot send another dead person. He is sending a living individual to replace another living. So the Father also sent the Spirit. So both the Father and the Son joined in sending the Holy Spirit. So the fact that the Father and the Son sent the Holy Spirit proves that the Son is different being from the Spirit. 
So these are three different people. So the spirit is another comforter besides the Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter 14, verse 16, where the Lord Jesus Christ was saying, I'm going to send you another comforter. Another one of the same sort. We are almost the same is another helper. If the Holy Spirit is another name for the Lord Jesus Christ, then it will not be another comforted. It will be not, it is a different person. He said, I'm going to send you another comforter, another person. If I said, I'm going to send you another pastor, it could be Pastor CY, Pastor Sambo, Pastor Samson Jude, it's a different person. Then you know somebody else is going to come. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4 to 6 also lists the spirit separately from the Father and Son. Let's see. Ephesians chapter 4. Auntie Jofita, can you read for me, please? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4 to 6. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4 to 6. Ephesians chapter 4. Are you available, Andy? I read in Jesus. Ah, okay. Yeah, six is a little bit different. Verse 4 to 6. And uh, uh, there is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one, hope of your calling. Five, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Six, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. Amen. Amen. So here, this passage mentions seven things of which there's only one in each in God's true plan for man's unity. We can see there is one thing here. The body is not the hope. The baptism is not the Lord. The faith is not God. So there is distinction. So the Holy Spirit is a living spirit, just as surely as there is the Father and the Son. But he is not the Father, nor the Son. Nor is he just a part of the Father. He is a distinct individual. If we can understand how the Father and how the Son can exist as separate individuals, then we can understand how the spirit can exist as a separate individual. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse four. May the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one that we use for our, uh, this, uh, um, for sharing our grace, or the Acts chapter 10, verse 38. So we want to talk briefly about the deity of the Holy Spirit. So if the Holy Spirit is a living being, but he is not the father of the son, then what position does he hold? What level of authority does he possess? How should we view him? The Holy Spirit is the third member of the Trinity. I don't want to tell you how he's calculated, so it doesn't make him less of a God. The Lord Jesus Christ is the second member of Trinity. I don't want you to get excited and say, ah, this one, or it makes him lesser of a God, no. These are theological positions, how they are calculated. I don't want you to get excited over these matters. They don't make him lesser of any God or make him lesser than Jesus Christ or less make him lesser than God the Father. It shouldn't interest you. So he is above demons, he's above human beings, he's above the angels. So the Holy Spirit is a living being that what we have proved that is not a demon, he's not a human being, he's not an angel. The only position that is left is deity. The Bible describes no other kinds of spirit beings other than those that we have seen, humans, demons, angels. 
So we know that if it's not this, then it must be dead. What you've relayed that is above all the other things. So it confirms that the position must be a date. Is also referred to by the terms of the date. Ananias, he said he lied to Ananias, he lied to the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 5, verse 3. In doing so, he lied not to men but God, verse 4. And uh, Acts chapter 5, verse 4. In lying to the Holy Spirit, Ananias did not lie to men. It also follows that. The Holy Spirit is more than just a man. If the lie was told to God, then the Holy Spirit must partake of the character and nature of God. He possesses deity. You did not lie to anybody else, you lied to God. If they tested the Spirit of the Lord, verse 9, it is wrong to test God. Is it true? Follow me to Matthew chapter 4, verse 7. It is teaching, allow me to take a bit of time, please. Allow me a little bit, we want to finish it here. Teaching is very important. I get carried away a little bit because it's very important to, at times it sweet me when, let's go to Matthew chapter four, verse seven. Let me read. Jesus said unto him, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. He is talking about the devil now. What did the devil say here? Let's, let, let's see, because I want us to read and see. What did the devil see? say? The devil said here, Verse 6, and he said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, Ye shall give the angels charge concerning, concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, and at any time thou shalt. This is Psalm chapter 19, 91, verse 11 and 12. You know, the devil was quoting the angels, they were quoting the Bible. So the devil knows the Bible very well. So he was saying now, the Bible says, he was quoting Psalm 91, he said, Hmm. The devil is very crafty. He's using the Bible, but he's twisting it. He said, just to fall down, there is going to touch you. The angels are going to hold you. He said, no, don't try, don't test the spirit of God. So it is wrong to test God. So the Lord was using the Bible. So we are commanded to test other spirits. First, John chapter 4, verse 1. We are commanded to test other spirits. He said, check whether they are coming from God. But here we don't test God. Why is it wrong to test God? So we see the Bible here. It's very important. Test other spirits whether they are coming of God. But here said you don't test God. I don't go and put my, my, my wallet or leave my car open so that people in the car, people may be still. I want to, you know, I'm a man of God. People are not going to steal. They are testing God. They will come and steal that money in broad daylight. Go and try it. They will steal. He is the spirit of God. So in studying the names of the spirit, we have examined the passages where the Holy Spirit is called the spirit of God. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. But how can he, the spirit of God, he, how can he be the spirit of God unless he possesses the character and nature of God? So the spirit, the, the spirit of man possesses and partakes of the spirit and character and nature of man. So the spirit of a demon possesses and partakes the spirit of a demon. The spirit of an angel protects in the spirit of an angel. So it follows that the spirit, the Holy Spirit, would only be the spirit of God if he has got the nature of God. So here we see that the Holy Spirit is a living, is a living spirit. He's a spirit being. He is a distinct spirit being from the Father and the Son. So the Holy Spirit is a living spirit being who possesses the character and nature of a deity. So he is the third being in the Godhead, with the, along with the Father and the Son. He is the third person. He is the spirit of truth. He is the spirit of glory. He is the spirit of life. So there are many names that can be given to. So he, he, he partakes in the character and nature of God. Yet, in the separate individual form from the Father. May I ask a question, Sean? Yeah, please. Um, here, I don't understand. I need the understanding. Mm -hmm. um, when, when God was, uh, when this the sample, um, uh, God showed uh, when the Lord Jesus was coming, he said, this is my, my own son that I love. Okay. 
uh, I don't I don't I don't know how to explain it in Danish that where they were uh, where they hear the voice of the Lord uh, and then the Lord Lord Jesus um, and he went up he said this is my own son that I love and how comes then um, um, the word of God is telling us that um, when you 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 say anything for the Holy Spirit you will never be forgiven. But for the Lord Jesus, you would be forgiven. Uh, why, why for the Holy Spirit that you will never forgive, but for the Lord Jesus, who is the son of God, you will be forgiven? Is it because is a, is a, is the Lord who died on the cross for us? Or what, what is the difference? Why the Holy Spirit is, is more like, like uh, God the Father, like, is like this Holy Spirit is more important than Jesus because the Lord Jesus also died for us. Why when people speak bad on him and they repent, they will be forgiven, but not the Holy Spirit? Uh, that question, I do not want to directly answer it. But let me go back to Matthew chapter 12, verse 31 and 32. That's where it is. Matthew chapter 12, verse 31 and 32. Wherefore, I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall be forgiven him. Neither it shall, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither, or neither in the world to come. Good, there's a ministration that has been given to me just now, but I, I never wanted to answer it. Two things that has been given to me just now. One, the Holy Spirit before, remember John the Baptist, when he first saw the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, look, the Lamb of God, that taketh away the sins of man. He saw the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God. Mm. He did not know him. He, he prophesied by the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit did not live in human beings before. He will come, prophesy, and live. A few chapters when he was arrested, he sent his disciples to go and ask the Lord Jesus Christ, are you the one that I saw or we should wait for another? That's where the Lord Jesus Christ said, what did you see? The lamb walking, the blind seeing, what did you see when he was going to say, go and tell him, what did you see? He was telling them now, go and tell John, what did you see? He said, truly, among those born of, of women, John is the greatest. Remember, say, if you are waiting for Elijah, Elijah surely come. This is the John, this Elijah, the John, the Elijah that you are waiting for, the surely come. John is the Elijah that you are waiting for. So the Holy Spirit that we're waiting for now has been given to men. So remember, the Holy Spirit has become a witness to everything that we do. If you've got the Spirit of God in you now, everything that you do, the Holy Spirit witnesses to your spirit. So yeah, I don't know, does not, you cannot say, I don't know anything. Before you do anything now, even if you speak wrongly, anything that you do now, let me tell you, especially if you don't hear the voice of God, before you do anything, it happens so fast. This is a subject for another day. If you don't know, if you want to know how to hear from God, before anything happens in your life, there's a question that Auntie Georgina asked, a very good question. How do you hear from God? Very interesting question. Very, it was a very good question. It's so fast at times, depending on the level of maturity or a level of sensitivity. God can speak so fast, get so quiet, that it needs, it needs a lot of, you need to your you need to quiet yourself so, so much that you don't have to, when, when you are too, like, too fast like this, you don't hear anything. You need to steady yourself. Listen very attentively. God does not speak when you are speaking. That's God for you. When you are speaking, he doesn't talk. And when you want to listen, probably he will not talk. 
So you will continue talking and talking and talking and still maybe you, will, you may speak much later. It could be a year or whatever, whenever you, he chooses to speak. So when you want to hear from God, you learn obedience to listen. When he speaks, he can speak quietly. For me, he, he has got ways in which he speaks to me. He can be talking now or the ministration that I can just get now. Ministrations comes by Rema, or you just minister to your spirit now, but you need to be very sensitive in spirit to know who is speaking. There are three or four people that can speak. Um, you can speak to yourself. You need to, you need to distinguish yourself, your voice, the voice of the Lord, and the voice of the devil. Though there are four um, enemies that fight to, four, four or five, four, four or five enemies that fight you every day before you wake up. Your old self, the world, sin, and uh, what is, is it the world, self, and, yeah, and Satan. So we've got about four evils that fight you every day. So you need to be careful about the four, the four evils that fight you every day. And three people that speak you, yourself, the devil, and the Lord. The devil is very persistent when he speaks, and he speaks with a lot of pride and with a lot of justification. The Lord does not justify when he speaks. So just look at this person. Would you let this person just do this thing? There's a lot of justification, a lot of pride. When the Lord speaks, he say, let it go. So when you learn to know how the Lord speaks, you begin to understand, you say, who is speaking? you see the level of humility. There are certain things that happen that just smile. When you say, son, when, when I hear, when I just hear the word son, I smile at times, you know, I'll be boiling inside. You say, son, I just smile, I say, father. <laughs> I just smile, you know, you just smile and say, I get it. Say, so after a while, you will see, you get yourself peace, you will, you will find yourself peace. You say, dad, I call him dad, you say, dad, you say, good. You will get the peace that you want. You will hear, say, son, you say, ah, oh, okay, now temperature, temperature. You will get it. So you would know, you would learn when he speaks. Even in the middle of what something, you know, the temperatures are, are rising now. Say, son, you will get the warnings. Even if you go over the top, you will still get those warnings. You choose to ignore them. So there are parameters. So why the Holy Spirit here, he speaks, but he chooses to ignore. So he gets sensitivity. So those are the things. Pastor C, I talked something when I was talking about, I am the, you are the one with support. You are, you are the life that you live is supposed to be the life of Christ. That exchange on the cross was supposed to be substitutionary. That means you are supposed to be dead. But you see Christians get ang um, angrily easily. Christians are annoyed easily. That's why people are no longer going to church now. Because the type of life Christians are living now, it's so annoying, it's so discouraging, even people are outside. So people are saying, why should I be going to church? People are discouraged because we are the Bible that they read. So the Holy Spirit is always there with us. He witnesses everything that we are doing, he ministers to us. Not that the Lord Jesus Christ does not see, he sees, but the Holy Spirit, remember, First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So he resides in you. The angels does not reside in you. you your body is not the temple of the, of the angels. No, but the Holy Spirit. Your body. The Lord Jesus Christ comes in your heart, not in your body. Remember, that's a difference. He said, Lord Jesus Christ, come into my heart. He doesn't come in your body. But your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We'll do a teaching about it so that you allow us to finish. If we get time, I'll try, I'll try and expand a little bit more about it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. It's a very interesting thing. There are many things that I want to talk about. It's a, it's a separate teaching that is very intense. But allow me to quickly, I've, I've got about uh, 15, 10, 10 minutes or so. I wanted to quickly finish this one. Because next week, we can cover some of those things because on the gifts, 
We wanted to cover those ones. It can come under blasphemy as well. We want to cover some of those things. They will come, most of those things. We can try to include them on the gifts. He possesses the character and does the work of deity. We want to talk about the dawn of creation. Genesis chapter 1, 2. The spirit of God was hovering above the waters during the dawn of creation. The spirit of God was present at creation and was involved in it, even as with the Father and the Son. Also in Psalms 104, verse 30, during creation of the animals, he sends forth his spirit and they are created and renewed. He adorns the heavens by his spirit. Job chapter 26, verse 18. So the spirit was involved in doing the work of creating and sustaining the universe. This is the work of eight. Job chapter 33, verse 4. Job chapter 4, 34, verse 14 and 15. The spirit is everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. God is all knowing, all knowing and present everywhere. King David said, where can I go from your spirit? He was talking about the Holy Spirit. He then described how the spirit would see him everywhere. So the Holy Spirit is omnipresent, which is the characteristic of a deity. Where do we find that in the Bible? Psalms 139, verse 7 to 12. Psalms 139, verse 7 to 12. If you want to find the all-knowing, the all-knowing, where do we find it? Psalms 139, verse 1 to 6. So you can read Psalms 139 from 1 to 6, from 1 to 12. So let's see, all-knowing source of divine revelation. When inspired men, God uh, spoke for God. It was not they who spoke, but the Holy Spirit. Mark chapter 13, verse 11. Is it true? Yes, let's see what the Bible says. Mark chapter 13, verse 11. You know, teaching, I do not want to, to rush teaching because it's important. I do not want you to drink poison because it's very important. With the teaching, wherever you go, you stand on a very solid background. Mark chapter 13, verse 11. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in, is it? Is it? No. Sorry, I'm reading the Lord. Sorry. Yeah. It says, but when they shall lead you and deliver you up, and take no thought beforehand what you shall speak, neither do you premeditate, but whatsoever you shall be given in, in that hour that you shall speak, for in that, for it is not that you speak, but that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. So here we are seeing an all source of divine revelation. When persecution comes, it's the Holy Spirit that is going to tell you what to do. And that hour, you don't say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to say this. No, don't. He is he guided. This is Mark chapter 13, verse 11. And when you see John chapter 16, verse 13, it says almost the same thing. He guided, inspired men into all truth. He is the source of all knowledge. This is the work of deity. What other being would be so described if he did not possess deity? What other person can be described if he's not deity? This is surely deity. This is God. He does not speak of his own. He speaks in agreement with the Father and the Son. The Holy Spirit knows the mind of God and reveals it to men. So how can be, how could any lower being said to know the mind of God? So Ephesians chapter three, verse three to five, the spirit man, the spirit made known the mystery of Christ, which had not been made, made uh, how should this, the spirit, the, the spirit made, uh, the, the spirit made known um, the mystery of Christ, which had not, which had not been uh, made known men in the earlier ages. It is the spirit of God that revealed everything. Like I said, the plan of salvation was designed by God the Father, willed by the Lord Jesus Christ and revealed by the Holy Spirit. Prophecy came, never came by man's will, but by holy men who spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 21. So scriptures 
Second Timothy chapter three, verse 16. Scriptures, the message of scriptures is the message of God. The Holy Scripture is the source. We had the, 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 the Holy Spirit is the source with the power to reveal it. So when we talk about the Bible, it's the Holy Spirit, it's not me. So men acted the spokesperson or messengers, but they made it clear it's not our message. That's why when I'm preaching, I go from the Bible. I don't add or subtract. We are not the source, it's not based on my authority. It's the same for angels. So that's why I tell you people, it's, you are not called by an angel. An angel can bring you a message, but you are called by the Lord Jesus Christ. So we should know that he has got unlimited authority and power. But throughout the Bible, the Holy Spirit is spoken of as the source of miracles. But miracles by their very nature are works that only God can do. In the virgin birth, Mary conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave apostles to speak, uh, to speak in tongues. God bore witness in the message of inspired men by signs, wonders, miracles, and gifts of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 to 11. All miraculous powers are from the Holy Spirit. He distributed to these to men according to his own will. So as he desired, he gave others utterances, uh, the spirit of wisdom, the, the ministry of the word, the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, faith. He gave as he so fit. So miracles were often done through inspired men or angels, but they repeatedly, they repeatedly denied that they were the source of power. Not me, not all people. So me, you think I cannot heal. When you see me boasting, like I said, run away. If I, if I bring 10 cops now, when you see, say, ah, Pastor Jeff can now heal. If you say, say me, if she, I can do this. If you see me taking, taking any credit, run for your life. Come and play this source there on YouTube. Come and run for your dear life. Say, that is what this man told us a few years ago. Run for your life. Say, another spirit has taken over. Run for your dear life. Run. Another, another source has taken over. Run for your life. For the very nature and purpose of miracles demands that their source must be God hated. Yet the Holy Spirit is repeatedly spoken of as the source of power. That's it. Baptism, we heard that all nations are commanded to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Here we saw the significance of this. Would God ever issue a command in the name of the Father, the Son, and the human being, even an angel? No, it has got to be somebody who, is, who has got a significance. So we need to see here for what it is that the Holy Spirit is dead. To illustrate, Apostle Paul asked if he was ever crucified for us. He said, no. So it will be blasphemy to exalt a man or an angel as, as if he died for us. You and I never dies for us. Then he asked if we are baptized in the name of Pastor Jeff or Apostle Paul. No. We should glory in the deity because we are baptized in the name of deity. It will be blasphemy to be baptized in the name of any person. Now we hear people are now being baptized in the, in the name of our apostle or something, in the name of prophet something. This is blasphemy. You see the Bible is very, it's making it very clear. If the court apostle Paul, the apostle Paul refused, this is apostle Paul. Which apostle Paul are you quoting from the Bible? If the court apostle, apostle Paul say you're lying, but we are baptized in the name of the Holy Spirit right along with the Father and the Son. Therefore, the Holy Spirit possesses deity as surely as to the Father and the Son. So the Holy Spirit does the work and possesses a name and authority that only God possesses. Forgiveness and redemption and sanctification. So all these things, only the deity can do it and that's it. Only God can forgive sins. Mark chapter two, verse five, five, five to seven. Since sins are forgiven in baptism, then to be baptized in the name of anyone other than the deity would be blasphemy. But we are baptized in the name of the Holy Spirit as well as the Father and the Son. So the Holy Spirit possesses the power to forgive us, to forgive our sins. Sinners are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. 
the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit justifies from sin, but only God can justify from sin. So the Holy Spirit is God. We are elect according to the foreknowledge of the Father in sanctification of the Spirit or in obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Again, all three beings are involved in salvation. So sanctification is essential to our salvation as surely as election and the blood of Jesus. Only deity can sanctify men. So the passage involves the spirit in our salvation as fully as other beings of the deity. So the three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has characteristics that only deity possesses and does the work only deity has. So the Holy Spirit is God, he is surely the third member of the Trinity. In rounding up, in rounding up, the purpose for this um, Bible study forensic analysis was to prepare us to talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's very important to increase our understanding of the Holy Spirit and his gifts. And this understanding should lead us to a greater understanding, appreciation of who the Holy Spirit is. He is not just a force, a power. He is a living spirit being. This is the personal characteristics of God. So when we understand that, we will be able to know who he is. He is the third member of the God entity. May the Lord help us. May the Lord guide us as we start to talk about the spiritual gifts. When we finish, then we will do the impartation of the spiritual gifts. And the Lord, I hope we have um, broadened our understanding of the nature of the Holy Spirit. Over to you.